Hello everyone, this is The Historiographer. Many pointless wars have been etched into the annals of history, including most famously the Bucket War, the War of Jenkins' Ear, and various others. Yet, a common trait between these wars is the involvement of European belligerents, hence increasing their popularity amongst the literature and therefore the consciousness of the Western world. However, Trapped in the sand dunes of Arabia lie countless unknown stories waiting to be told to the western audience. Amongst these stories is the Al-Basus War, an equally pointless war fought in pre-Islamic times between two Arab tribes in Najd, Arabia, where the spark that ignited this conflict was a simple camel. During the late 5th century and early 6th century AD, which is the era interlapping with the Al-Basus War, the Arabian Peninsula was a fractured land, dominated by tribal infighting and border raids mainly within the Kingdom of Kindah, but also with wars against Persian and Roman client states, as well as instability in southern Arabia. The Al-Basus War occurred between two tribes in the Arabian Peninsula from about 494 to 534 AD. The tribes in question were the Banu Taghlib tribe, and the Bakr ibn Wa'il tribe, both sister tribes living in the Najd region of Arabia, under the nominal suzerainty of the decentralized Kindah kingdom, which was akin to a confederacy of Arab tribes. The leader of the Taghlib tribe, which was a stronger entity than its neighbor the Bakr ibn Wa'il, was a powerful albeit callous chieftain and poet named Kulayb ibn Rabi'ah al-Taghlibi. Kulayb was a well-respected Arab tribesman who fought many wars in Arabia, especially versus the Yemeni kings in the south. However, over time, he began to have what one would call delusions of grandeur. Indeed, Arabic sources mention that he was tyrannical to his people and to neighboring tribes, refusing to allow any camel which did not belong to his tribe to graze on his land. He also forbade the Bakr ibn Wa'il tribe to access water wells in his domain despite the existing alliance between the two. This soured relations between both kinsmen, and tensions would soon reach a breaking point. The name behind Al-Basus war comes from Al-Basus, the aunt of the chief of the Bakr ibn Wa'il tribe. One day, Al-Basus went to visit her relatives from the Taghlib tribe. Reaching the lands of Taghlib, her camel went to graze. However, the chieftain Kulayb saw the foreign camel and he shot the animal dead with an arrow. Knowing what happened, Al-Basus, who was already annoyed at Kulayb due to familial issues, cried, what a humiliation, and chanted, I have become in a foreign land where the wolf strikes on my sheep. When the chief of the Bakr ibn Wa'il tribe, Al-Jassas ibn Murrah al-Bakri, heard what happened to his aunt, he went to meet Kulayb. In the meeting, Jassas was initially cool-headed, unwilling to harm his relatives. Jassas expressed old grievances between both tribes. However, Kulayb further provoked and antagonized Jassas with his arrogance and unwillingness to make amends. As a result, the Bakri leader killed Kulayb with a spear in the back and starting the infamous Al-Basus War. Al-Zir Salim succeeded his brother Kulayb and he became the chieftain of the Taghlib tribe, forever determined to avenge his brother's death at the request of his dying brother. Indeed, while bleeding to death, Kulayb chanted a poem to his brother in which he implored him to fight to the bitter end. The war between both tribes, however, could not be ended quickly. This was because of the nature of the war due to the employed hit and run tactics and raids, as well as the complex web of alliances, where on one day one tribe would have the upper hand, yet on another day the other would emerge victorious. This perpetual cycle of bloodbath continued despite the efforts of the Kindah king and poet Imr al-Qais to broker peace. Nevertheless, the superior numbers of the Banu Taghlib tribe ultimately resulted in victory and Al-Jassas was killed in 534 AD while fighting after 40 years of bloody conflict. The Taghlib tribe was strengthened, but the status quo of perpetual fighting between Arab tribes remained. Yet, this status quo would be changed nearly 40 years later with the birth of a man that would forever change the course of human history by uniting all of Arabia, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But that is a story for another time. In conclusion, 
Ibasu's War remains one of history's fascinating chapters that is unknown to the Western audience. Yet, in parts of the Arab world today, the Al Basus War has been incorporated into an aphorism warning people against vendettas and personal revenge. If you like this video, subscribe to share the lesser known histories of our world. This has been the historiographer, and for now, have a good one.